In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the many steps that you're going to need to take in order to combine several email accounts into one. The great thing about this, the great thing, please don't get discouraged. The great thing about this is once you do it, it's done. The way that I'm going to show you to set it up is you'll do it once and you'll never have to do it again. Uh, and you'll also know how to do it in the future if you want to add other ones, other, other accounts to, uh, to Gmail. But I'm going to show you how you can combine several email accounts into one. I have no less than a dozen different email addresses that I use from this one inbox. Um, and it's just so simple uh, once it is set up. And it's really not that difficult to set up, but I'm gonna show you how. Um, so it's not gonna be even slightly difficult. It's just gonna be easy. So you can get other email into your Gmail account into one of two ways. Okay, one of two ways you can get email into your Gmail account. And let's say you've got, um, uh, two different, you've got a, a work address and you've got a personal address and you want to get them both into Gmail. So you can either forward those addresses into your Gmail account or you can go pull them or sync them using POP and IMAP. And POP and IMAP are just different ways that you can have your email addresses talk to each other. So you can either forward it or you can use the POP or IMAP method. Um, so those are the two ways you can you can get um, those messages uh, to your account. So the first thing you want to do if you have, uh, let's say, a Hotmail, a Yahoo, or AOL account, something like that, uh, is that you want to move all your existing messages. So let me show you how to do that. So to move all your existing messages, right, you're going to click on this uh, gear here and click on settings. And you're going to go to import mail and contacts. Uh, which is right here. I'm sorry, accounts and import. Um, and then you go to import mail and contacts right here. And you're going to import mail from those uh, or other POP3 accounts. And again, POP is when accounts that are limited, uh, I mean, you can't sync them with this account. You have to uh, pull messages from them. Okay. I mean, when it comes there, it doesn't come to your account. Um, the difference would be like with a Gmail account, any other Gmail account, you can actually forward any message you send to a, a Gmail account to another account. It's, it's very, very simple. Um, but with these other accounts, you're trying to get all of your mail from the other accounts, your existing mail, sort of your big, call it your moving boxes. You want to be able to box all those messages up and move them in. Uh, this will show you how to do that. Again, we're at, in the settings, accounts and import, import mail and contacts. We'll show you how to do that using um, uh, this dialogue right here. Okay, this option. The The second thing, if you want to pause and go do that right now, that's great. The second thing you're going to do to combine several accounts is, is once you've moved that mail over or set up a sync between the two, um, which we'll talk about a little bit, but once you've done that, you want to be able to send mail as that address. So I can send mail as any of these addresses, okay? from my inbox. So let me just show you what that looks like. So if I go to compose, uh, I have it by default sent to come from Andy at take permission.com, but I can choose any of these other messages. So let's send it from Andy gmail.com. Okay. So I can send email from this address. I can send email from Andy at take permission.com. And if you notice the signatures are different because I generally treat them different. This is my business address. This is my more personal one. Um, you can see I have different email signatures uh, for different um, uh, for different email addresses, but I can send mail as any of these different email addresses. So I'm going to show you how to do that quickly. Go to settings, and then accounts and import, and then send mail as. And this is where you can add another email address that you own. So you want to enter the name you want to be associated with the uh, uh, with the account, the email address and then treat as alias, uh, you can, um, I uncheck that actually, and then you're gonna click on next step and then it's gonna ask you to send a verification, okay? Uh, so again, just the name, the email address, and then um, it's gonna ask you to send a verification. Now, the next window that pops up is going to be a verification code. We can enter a verification code. Just close that last window because it's gonna send you an email to that address to confirm that you have control over it. And in that email, it's gonna have a link you can click. It also has a verification code, but you can just ignore the verification code thing. 
just click on the link that allows you uh, to confirm that you can send mail as. Now, what's pretty cool is if you already have that address forwarded to this account that you're trying to send mail as, that verification message will actually come to this inbox. Because what you just did is you said, okay, please um, give me permission to send mail as my work address. Well, if you already have your work address forwarded to this email account, then that verification email will show up in this inbox. Otherwise, you have to go over to your work email, just open up that message. It should show up pretty, pretty much instantaneously. And then you just have to click on uh, the confirmation link and then it'll open up a page that says you've been confirmed. You can now, um, you can now send mail as that address from your account, okay? Um, you can also reply to messages from the same address it was sent to. And so I wanna make sure you turn that setting on. And again, we're over in accounts and import. Uh, when replying to a message right here, reply from the same address the message was sent to. Okay, now that, that's gonna be helpful because if you have several different businesses, you don't wanna confuse people um, with your sort of online identity. So I always reply to the same message that it was sent to. In addition, you have to choose one of your uh, emails as uh, your default email. So my default email is andy at takepermission.com. Okay, but that's your default email. So when you go to compose a message, that is the message that it is going to come from by default. All right. Now, if you want to be able to check other messages from other accounts uh, and have them sync up, a lot of times they're POP3 accounts. Right. Uh, for instance, my wife's Hotmail address, uh, you cannot forward messages from Hotmail to another account. I have to use POP3. And the way you set that up is you have to go click down here to check mail from other accounts, add a POP3 mail account you own. Just go through this. All right. It will walk you through it. Name, password, settings, things like that. And I'm not going to be able to go through them all, but generally you can usually Google the question like it'll ask what's the POP server for Google. Gmail or the POP server for Yahoo or whatever your, your other account is or your work account, um, your IT people should know, uh, or your web provider, if it's a, uh, or your, I should say your hosting company, whether it's Bluehost or GoDaddy, whoever, uh, your domain is through and therefore your email is through, will be able to help you answer the questions if you're stumped on any of them or just Google them. But what this allows you to do is to, uh, while you're in this, uh, in this Gmail inbox, it will go pull email from that account uh, on a regular basis. Um, if it will not go, it will not show up in your inbox automatically though, unless it's forwarded. So you can see right here for this other email address, the last time it was checked was 58 minutes ago. So if you sent me an email to that address in the last 58 minutes, I haven't gotten it yet. So if you want to go and out and check it regularly, you can just open up your settings, go to your accounts and import and click check mail now. Um, but, um, that's why I don't like POP, uh, and POP three, because it, 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 it takes so long. I want all my stuff right now. So if you can forward a message, forward messages from one email address to another, then do that. Okay. A lot of, um, hosting companies like Bluehost allow you to not create an email address, but actually just create an email forwarder. So if you send an email to an address, it would automatically forward. That's the kind of, th that's the kind of email address that you want to create. Uh, and send to your Gmail um, that versus all these messages you have to go and pull from another account. Okay, so just know that if you can avoid POP3, do, but if you can't, this is where you set it up to go get mail from all those other accounts and it will pull them in, which is great. And then you can also apply a label automatically to those messages. So as they come in from that address, you could apply the label work. So every message that comes in from that, uh, that account will have the, the label work on it, which is great. Uh, that's the most difficult part. Um, and uh, one of the options is to leave a copy of the message on the other server. That's up to you. I don't do that. Um, sometimes there's limits on the server space, but uh, one of the options when you're creating the POP is, do I want to leave a message over there? I say no. Another option is to always use a secure connection. Uh, I do check that as yes. You can apply a label. That's another option. Um, and you can archive income messages, meaning skip the inbox. Uh, you can do that if you'd like. It's up to you. All right. So you can, um, uh, let's see. 
Oh, and here, here, here's another way to handle multiple email addresses. And this one's really cool. Okay. So, um, and this is just something unique to Gmail. So you want to create a different email address for family and work with your Gmail maybe. Okay. So what you could do are for different people. So let's just say your email was, um, fam was trobs at gmail.com, which I don't, I don't know if that email exists. All right. So, um, so if you want to do tr trob, let's do, um, well, I, I'm not going to type it. I'll type it in here because I want to show these people's email addresses. So trob at gmail.com. That's one email address. But if you want to have several emails go into one account, um, actually I'm going to do this. I'm going to do an Andy Um, if you want to do, um, several emails on one account, it ignores periods. Gmail does as well as plus. So let me just show you this. This email address is the exact same as this trob.family and trobfamily at gmail.com are the exact same. Okay. This is also the same trobfamily plus. newsletter okay and and you could also do trial family plus finance so the reason you would add those is if you want to create multiple addresses to give out to different places and you want to know uh sort of customize them filter them um which is a different video but if you want to use multiple email addresses using one gmail account then you can add all those little periods and pluses and things like that. And they'll all end up in your inbox, right? So you can actually give out different email addresses based on the service. I mean, you can make a new email address for every different company you sign up with. Uh, and just by adding your email plus, and then the name of that company or whatever the service is at gmail.com. And you can track maybe who's selling your email address or, or create a filter for all of your financial correspondence or whatever that might be, or all your newsletters you signed up for. Okay. So, um, that is a great, great way for you to um, begin to uh, sort your email uh, and to be able to um, uh, use multiple email addresses in one Gmail account.